Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello in the back. And welcome. Good evening to everybody. What a packed house. I can't tell you how thrilling this is to see everybody here and interested and in our program and in learning more about what we have to offer with partnerships. So I'd like to welcome you to our block leader gathering. We, for our newbies, we have our gatherings about three times a year. And in a moment, I'd like to introduce some of our newest block leaders. But first of all, what I'd like to do is well, say hello. My name is Laura DeMondon Lee, for those of you who don't know who I am. I've been coordinating this program since its inception about 11 years ago. Or is it 11 and a half? Anyway, a long time. Uh, I'd like to introduce a couple of people in the audience. And first of all, Carol Atwood, if she is still here. There she is. Carol. Carol is our, our new Parks and Recreation Director, and she is also our new boss. Uh, Stephanie, Ken, and I now report to Carol. And so if you would just say hello to Carol. <laughs> Carol's been with the city for a very long time. You may recall that she's been Administrative Services Director, and um, she is now in charge of Parks and Recreation. So thank you, Carol, for coming out. Would you like to say a couple words, or you want me to continue? Because I'll keep going. <laughs> I will be very brief. I just wanted to thank you for coming out tonight. I, I've seen some familiar faces from Tuesday night as well at the Apple meeting that we had. So um, it's been a long week for all of us, but we really appreciate um, your time and your effort in making Cupertino the community that we all love and um, are very proud of. Without you, we will be up a creek, so to speak, if we have a disaster, because um, you're the ones that are really going to pull your neighborhoods together, and we appreciate that. Um, one program that you are going to see, because we now have Laura under Park and Recreation, is we want to take a good look at our neighborhood parks and um, have them more loved as we can afford to love them. But in the meantime, we might be approaching some of you um, to get your opinions on what you would like to see in your neighborhood park and what's working and what isn't. So we'd like to bring the community together in another venue, and that is in your own backyard around your neighborhood park. So it's something that's coming up. Um, we also are planning a master plan for the whole corridor McClellan Ranch to Stevens Creek. We would like your input on that, too. That starts in January. So thank you again. I know nights are very precious, especially if you're working or you have people at home. So thank them, too, and um, enjoy your dinner. OK, thank you, Carol. Now, I mentioned that we have a number of first timers here. so. If you would, I'd love to be able to call your name out if you would just do a hand wave. And I've also put a special pin on their name tags. They may have taken it off because they didn't know what it was for. <laughs> so if you would welcome them, that would be great. Uh, Joe Brack, Wayne Chin, Kevin Davis, in the back, Min Lee, Wei Lee, Ron Miller, Bindu Mohan, Joellen Poon, Rohith Ravindranath, Sabrina Rizk, and Jeff Woolhouse. Great. Thank you. Welcome. A lot of new people, and for that, it's been a great thing. I had an opportunity to speak with Leadership 95014, which, was, which is our city leadership program. Um, you've received messages about them from me in the past. And we were able to pick up a bunch of people from Leadership 95014, also from Block Leader Referrals, as well as some of us, some of them who found us on the web. So thank you for coming um, and joining us tonight. Uh, there are a number of announcements that I have before we move on to our featured speakers. First of all, I wanted to 
uh, ask you again to take a look at our maps to my right, your left, at the end of the program, or sometimes when you need a stretch break, take a look at that and see if your neighborhood needs some adjusting, if you've grown. I know that there are some neighborhoods that have um, invited other homes into their area, so if you would highlight those homes that have, are, are now added to your group, much appreciated, so we can include that in our database. Um, let's see. I did want to also mention to you that you... I know you received information about a search and rescue just this past week. It's been a, a crazy week. Uh, so I wanted to acknowledge those of you in CERT or who took part in the search and rescue, if you would just stand up for Mr. Liu, because he incidentally was found all the way at Santa Clara County Fairgrounds. I don't know if you know the story. <laughs> I don't really know the story, but all I know is he was way over there, and that's way over there. So if I would have, if you could please stand up, because we appreciate your, your taking part in that. I also received a number of emails from very concerned block leaders, so thank you for that. I like to keep you in the loop of as much as I know and I can pass on to you. I, you certainly will hear it from me. Uh, also, there are a couple of other announcements from other departments. We have general plan session, community-wide workshop number two, coming up next week, October 23rd. If you're interested, there are flyers in the lobby in front. And we also have a tree planting at Portal Park on November 16th. Um, what I'm hearing is on the day of the event, staff will be providing coffee and a morning snack. <laughs> Important, right? Training on proper tree planting, necessary tools and supplies, and of course, um, volunteer waiver forms for the day. So those of you especially who live in the area of Portal Park, you may be interested in tree planting, which is actually being coordinated by somebody outside of Cupertino uh, city staff. There is, there is a group called Silicon Valley Tree Planters um, who, who is arranging this. So that information is also out in the lobby. Okay. You guys never hear these kind of announcements from me. I, I just... <laughs> okay. There are a couple more. Uh, one of them is, is I am such a paper person. I, you know, you, you guys get this from me three times a year. We... <laughs> oh! Paper people. See, I'm like Charlie Brown with the little redhead girl, you know, just waiting for that mailbox and that letter to come in with the Valentine. And, but I know we're moving into another direction for paperless. So what I'd like to do is get a show of hands, since I know I, I have to walk into the new, to the dark side. <laughs> if anybody here has a preference for email or evites, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. And for those of you who do not have email, I mean, yes, email, I will still hard copy the, those that don't have email. So I'm going to say evite or email. Stephanie, will you help me out with this? And, okay, uh, and, and Chuck has a stand up. Okay, okay, evite, who prefers an evite? Oh, I can't count. Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, email. Same people? So are you telling me it doesn't matter and just go paperless? Okay, I'll do it. Yay, Wally, Wally, Mora, where are you? You reminded me to do this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to do that. I'll make it as colorful as possible. I'll try and send announcements as far as reminders go. But again, I'm, I'm such an old soul, and I'm so used to that. I do buy and recycle paper, but, you know, i got to move on. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, I'll try and do that. Some, 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 maybe an HTML that just jumps out at you. I'll, I'll go for that first because I like that personally. Okay, so that's out of the way. I did want to tell you uh, that I had an opportunity last month to go to Washington, D.C. before it was shut down, so yay for me. <laughs> and it was a great work trip. Um, I went to the National Conference on Citizenship. And what I learned at this very small conference of only about 150 to 200 people is that 
Of course, volunteerism is declining, um, and it has been since the late 60s. So I, I don't know how to gauge that, but, um, but I'm told this from, from the powers that be, and uh, we had some congressmen in, in, as a part of this, this session as well. Uh, but all, all points to the millennials and what, what we're going to do for this next generation. So what I wanted to report back to you is that social media has really changed things, as you know. And so there will be new opportunities for, for us to all look at to get others to be engaged. And um, so if you have, if you've known any, any programs very similar to ours, and we really aren't because we're really unique and you know that. But if you do know of anything like that, um, you know, shoot me a line and let me know what I can do as far as moving that forward. Uh, I had a chance to learn more about the broader scope, but also everything did point back to, you know, at that level, the federal level, we can't do that much. And so it was a little depressing, but they kept pointing back to the local level. But in your neighborhoods, you can engage people. And so that part was uplifting. So I wanted to share that with you, that there is good work going on. And the upper echelon knows about it. They know that we can make a difference. So I did want to keep encouraging you with that, because that truly makes a difference when we can get our neighbors to be involved and to get to know each other and start with volunteerism, you know, within the neighborhood and, and then going out toward the community. So just wanted to share that, that tidbit with you. I also, finally, I did want to tell you that I do get emails periodically from, from some of you who, when I'm trying to connect you with others, uh, other peers, other block leaders, they will admit to me that, gee, Laura, I haven't really done much. I, you know, I send my emails across to my neighbors. Uh, I talk with them periodically. You know, we get together, but I don't do much. But to me, that is what it's all about. So again, communication starts with these little ways. And the small ways that you think you're not making a difference, you're sending a message about, say, Mr. Lou, who was lost, or you're, you're um, letting them know about what's going on in the general scope of the city or what's going on building permit-wise in your neighborhood. That makes a difference. You can get that step one. Step two will be to, to continue your gatherings and your meetings uh, when you're able to do that. And so, again, I wanted to encourage you. I don't do that much doesn't really mean anything to me. I think you're doing something because everybody here has another life at home. And that's why we're, we feed you dinner. We're taking you away from your home and your obligations. So thank you for that. I just wanted to pass on these, these things that I've picked up over the, the last couple of weeks and welcome you. And um, then I think my time is up. So I need to get our featured speaker out here, Eugene. Eugene, where are you? Eugene Che. Chai. Che. And she's from next door, and she is a wonderful resource. She's been working with Stephanie Torini and I for several, couple months now, right? Several months on our next door program. So thank you for coming, Eugene. Hi everyone, so nice to meet you. Um, I am really excited that we are bringing next door to Cupertino, um, and tomorrow is actually when we are going to officially launch um, next door across the entire city. Um, so I just wanted to see um, how many people are already on next door. If you are on next door, could you raise your hands? Not that many people yet. Okay, well then, today will be a pretty good opportunity for you to learn um, what next door is about, how you can use it to connect with neighbors um, and make your neighborhood safer um, and more vi more vi vibrant um, through the next door platform. So I'll go ahead and just jump in with my presentation. Um, probably at the end of the presentation, I'll do a quick demo of the site and then I will answer some questions. So. What is Nextdoor? It's a private social network for your neighborhood. So basically, it's we have Facebook and Twitter to connect with friends, um, to follow influential people or um, breaking news. And then you have LinkedIn so that you can connect with your colleagues and people in your professional circle. But what's missing right now online is um, the social network that's really closest to your home and to your life, which is your neighborhood. 
And that's why our founders decided to create a platform that is for the neighborhood. Um, and it's interesting to see how social networks. Um, this is from um, a book, Bowling Alone, by Professor Putnam um, at Harvard. And what he has proven is that social networks, um, here he means physical social networks within you know, society, actually you know, lowers crime and improves public health and raises test scores. And today, it's, you just don't see a lot of that happening in um, our neighborhoods. And it's very striking and interesting to know that only 30% of um, all Americans know their neighborhoods by name. Um, so this is where Nextdoor comes in and helps you to bring back a sense of community to your neighborhood. And so these are the three key characteristics that I would say um, defines Nextdoor and how it's unique from other social networks and other websites that you use online. Um, first of all, it's private, and this is critical to creating a trusting environment between you and your neighbors. Um, the website is secure only for you and your neighbors. So everybody that joins Nextdoor um, has access to one single website um, that is just for people who live in with your, within your neighborhood boundary. And everybody has to verify their address and prove that they live in the neighborhood to join that Nextdoor site. Um, Everybody must use their real names. Um, and another thing is that none of your content will ever, ever be exposed on search engines. So if you went to Google and tried to search for content on your website, nobody would be able to um, search for that content. Um, another key aspect is that it's local and it's really um, the principle of Nextdoor is really based on location and geography and your neighborhood boundary. Um, so it's designed for the neighborhood um, and it's designed to connect you and your neighbors, um, not really friends, but your neighbors. And hopefully um, with the aspiration that your neighbors would become your friends through Nextdoor. Um, and so we do provide a lot of different offline mechanisms as well. Like, for instance, you can send a postcard invitation to your neighbor if you don't know their email, if you don't know them in person. We send a postcard out for you for free, um, and they would receive a postcard in the mail inviting them to join next door. Um, and then we have uh, a number of flyers that you can print out, um, and you can pass them out, um, go door to door and hand them out, or you can you know, post them on bulletins, or just drop it in people's you know, neighbors' mailboxes. So you can do that as well. Um, and lastly, it's useful. So it's really um, the utility of Nextdoor that makes it a very essential resource for you and your neighbors. So you have um, things like garage sales, a neighbored watch that you can coordinate through Nextdoor. Um, you can talk about local events. Um, and later, I'll explain how the city will get involved and the sheriff's office and other city departments can actually post into your neighborhood site as well. So a lot of information that's really relevant to you and your neighbors only. Um, that. So those three characteristics are really what define a next door neighborhood. And like I said, this is next door. This is what a typical next door website looks like, but I'll go into a quick demo at the end of the presentation. Um, and like I was saying, only neighborhood residents can join. So let's say you defined a neighborhood boundary that looks like this. All of the homes that are within your neighborhood boundary, those are the people that can join your next door neighborhood. And the way we verify each of those people in the neighborhood is you can either do a mobile or phone verification. So we match your billing address um, and your listed number, and we give you a phone call so that you can enter a code. Um, we can send you a postcard with a unique code um, to your home address, and you can use that postcard to verify um, and get access to the neighborhood site. Um, you can do a credit card uh, verification, which is instant, and all we do is just cross-check your mailing address, your billing address with um, the address you're using to sign up for Nextdoor. So we don't store your credit card information at all, it's just to cross-check the address. Um, and then you can also uh, be invited by a neighbor who's already verified on the site. So a lot of different um, methods of verifying that all of your neighborhoods are actually your neighbors and live in the neighborhood. Um, so Nextdoor is really catching on across the country. Um, we started two years ago with only 170, 60 neighborhoods um, in the country in 26 states. Today we have more than 20,000 neighborhoods using Nextdoor in all 50 states across the country. And um, like I said before, there are a lot of different um, ways and a lot of different topics that you can discuss on Nextdoor. It could be about you know, promoting different local uh, services, maybe you have a babysitter or a nanny that you would recommend, or you're looking for a handyman, you can do all of that on Nextdoor and um, get information from your neighbors. Um, you can, another popular uh, topic is um, community issues and crime and safety. So a lot of neighbors watch out for one another. If they see something suspicious, they post it out on their Nextdoor website to let everybody know. So 
neighbor to neighbor conversation is extremely powerful next door. There is a variety of different information that you can share and it's really relevant just to you and your neighbors and private to you and your neighbors. And then on top of that, when we layer on the city services, it adds even more value to um, your neighborhood site. So when the city gets involved, basically, the city has a separate website um, and their various departments, whether it's police or fire or neighborhood services, they, can, they have a platform that allows them to post to specific neighborhoods in the city or all neighborhoods across the city. So they can um, send out uh, search-related information, um, disaster and emergency preparedness-related information, um, other public safety information, Information, all of that you can send out through Nextdoor and to your neighborhood. Um, and so far, Nextdoor has partnered with more than 120 cities across the country. Um, some of our major cities are New York, Dallas, um, Houston, San Jose, San Diego, and Phoenix. So um, we have all of those major cities as well as 120 others that we have partnered with. And so you can see how Nextdoor is kind of like a lifeline to your neighborhood. First of all, you go and meet your neighbors um, through the online platform. You share information. Um, we believe that it really encourages offline um, networking as well, not just online. Um, and at the end of it, it really becomes an essential, essential platform um, to your neighborhood because you're talking about crime and safety, you're organizing neighborhood watch, and you're receiving urgent alerts from your um, neighbors as well as the city and your local police department. So this is just a quick snapshot of what Nextdoor looks like in Cupertino. Uh, we have around, I believe, 14 neighborhoods that are set up, and it crosses across, it's across the entire city. Um, and if you went to nextdoor.com today and typed in your address um, and your email, you would get redirected to one of these neighborhoods based on your address. So you would be able to join a Nextdoor neighborhood right away. So I will go ahead and do a quick demo of what a typical Nextdoor neighborhood looks like, and then I will open up the floor for questions. Um, so basically, once you have access to your Nextdoor neighborhood site, you can post a message to your neighbors You'll see how different people, they can talk about lost pets, um, you know, borrowing a ladder, garage sales, um, recommendations and parties. So a lot of different information um, between neighbors. And you can thank or reply on, your, uh, on the post from your neighbors. Uh, the different sections, you have to choose a category when you do a posting. So basically, it's either um, you know crime and safety or general or recommendations, lost and found. So there are six different categories that you can choose from. And you can filter those posts over here. So if you want to see just the crime and safety posts that have been on your website, um, you can see that information right here. And then another thing you can do is, let's say your neighborhood site is becoming pretty active and you want to form a group for a more intimate set of people that you want to connect with um, because you have common interests. You can create a public or private group. So you can do a running club or a dog owners group. And then it would just be conversations between um, the people within that group. So that's another way you can utilize Nextdoor. Um, and then lastly, when the city gets involved, you will see um, information from your city, whether it's you know, all of your city departments or just your local police department, you would see posts from them right here um, and also on the news feed and homepage. But you can filter it right here and you'll see how um, the police department can send information to your neighborhood or to all neighbors across the city about different meetings or um, important crime and safety updates that needs to reach um, you and your neighbors and so that you can be prepared. Um, and one other feature um, that is pretty unique to Nextdoor is that there's a nearby neighbors feature. So all of the Nextdoor neighborhood sites are private, but there is a way for you to communicate with neighbors beyond your own. So let's say you have three or four neighbors around you that you might want to connect with because there's some information that, is, that goes beyond, um, that is valuable to not just your neighbors, but people around you as well. Um, in that case, you have the option to communicate and post out to nearby neighborhoods. Um, for this demo website, this neighborhood only has one nearby neighborhood. So this is our demo neighborhood, and then Ashland would be their next door neighborhood. Um, typically, this is an automated algorithm, but typically you'll have maybe four to five or even more nearby neighborhoods. And what you can do is you can customize whether you want to communicate with them or not. So if you want to communicate with just your neighbors in your neighborhood, then you can turn all of these off. But if you do at any point want to communicate with some of the nearby neighbors, then you can turn these on and communicate with them. So you can see here that um, this person is 
sharing um, information, a crime, crime related information with not just his neighbors, um, but people in his next nearby neighborhood as well. Um, and then carpool and ride share, another great example of why you would want to go beyond just your neighborhood. Um, fire and other safety information. So that's basically um, a demo of a next door neighborhood site. And I don't know if I went too quickly. Did I talk too fast? I tend to do that. <laughs> so, oh. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, let me see. Um, sorry about that. Is that better? Um, it's going to get out of it. I don't think I can do more than that because if I expand even more, yeah, it's just not going to fit in. <laughs> so sorry if I move too quickly. Um, but go ahead and ask me questions, and I'll address those. So, yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah, so we have... Um so many houses in our, our neighborhood, our block, mm -hmm. uh, can we define it that way or do we have to go with these predefined? Um, so we did predefine them right now. A lot of them are actually, they were set up by residents in Cupertino. Um, and then we, I worked with Laura and Stephanie as well as the existing next door members to kind of align them with some of the sheriff's um, beats so that it would be effective for them to communicate crime and safety information. But if at any point um, you join next door and you talk to your neighbors and everyone feels like you need to change the neighborhood boundary or split it up, um, we could always definitely you know, help out with that and maybe re rezone everything. So that's something we can discuss. Um, yes, sir. You mentioned that uh, people can define which groups they want to talk to, mm -hmm. the neighboring neighborhoods. Right. Is that per user or is it per defined group? That's a great question. Yeah, it's actually per user. So um, even if you, everyone in your neighborhood actually has different settings. So it's based on you and your preferences. So you can choose to communicate and see posts and send out posts to people in nearby neighborhoods, or you can choose not to communicate with them. Um, yes, sir. Oh, that's okay. Who, was, who had the question? I think he, yeah, sir. Another way of asking my who pays for this is how is it funded? And if it's free now, is it going to be always free? Um, it will always be free for the city and our users. Um, we don't have a business model right now. We're a very young company, just two years. Um, we do have, we have raised around $40 million in venture capital funding in the past, um, and we're running on that venture capital funding right now. We probably will raise more money in the future. Um, and luckily, a lot of investors really believe in the value of Nextdoor, so they have been investing. Um, once our product is good enough and it's very refined and we know what our users are thinking and we find that the product is really, really solid, that's when we'll think about a business model. Um, but what, we're, what we envision right now is something um, along the lines of maybe uh, partnering with local businesses and you know, putting it on the website in a way where it's not invading the neighbors' you know, conversations, but really in a very in a fine-tuned way so that it's a good experience for everyone, even when we start to start to actually um, implement a revenue model. So, um, yes, sir. Um, taking a quick look at the, what is it, nine, 19 uh, areas in 13 square miles. That's about a roughly a square mile each chunk. Those are kind of big. Uh, can we break them up later on or now? Um, yeah, so same question as before. We did kind of work with the city as well as the existing people on next door um, to kind of sort this out and align it to share speeds. But we can definitely talk about you know re redefining the neighborhood boundaries. Um, but it would have to be an open forum. We have to get everyone to kind of um, participate in that conversation, and we would have to come to a conclusion for that. But I would encourage you to join your next door neighborhood first, um, see what that experience is like, and then open up a conversation about dividing the neighborhood out. Um, and another option is, like I showed you, there's a groups option. So when you feel like your neighborhood is too large, you can you know, set up a group, a private group maybe, just for your block and just communicate with them through the group as well. So that's another option. Does that, did that make sense? Uh, I have a I didn't see that in here. 
Okay, yeah, so it's right here. So this, is this working? No, it's not. <laughs> Oh, so there's a groups feature within the neighborhood. So let's say your neighborhood has um, maybe 800 um, households and you just want your block and that's maybe 50 households. You can create a private or public group just for your neighbors on the block and you can communicate in that section right here over in, in the group section. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Sorry, oh, yeah. Um, I am the uh, block leader for uh, four streets. We have actually four captains for each one for each street, mm -hmm. and about forty-five families. But some of the neighbors. Uh huh. So uh, is this based on an email marketing campaign? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, it's not an email model, but you do need an email to sign up for the service. So you enter your email address and your home address to join next door, um, and then we have email settings, and this is all. You can customize your email settings as well. You can decide to just go to the website um, and use it, but if you wanted to get everything by email, which some people prefer to do, um, you can customize your settings. So you can get immediate emails for certain postings or get no email. So there's a whole different email settings that you need to use. They can't. They have to have an email to sign up. As in the announcements, so they'll have to have an email address, even if they don't use their email. I have a situation where we have a number of widows, older residents who don't have email. Right. And she wanted to get the service and she wanted to get the service. How do you address that issue? How do you send an address? Yeah. So in the past, I know that. Um, we've had some of the active next door members um, print out things and actually go door to door and hand it out to some of the more you know senior um, citizens who don't have access to computers or don't have emails and that's their workaround around it but I mean without an email I think it'll be difficult to join I mean you just need an email to, to join the service so Yeah, I mean, yeah, some people have their children set up an email for them, and then, yeah. Okay, actually, you know, I've, I've got to stop you right here. I, there's so many questions, but in order for us to be able to have it get recorded, you need to speak into the mic, and I apologize. That other mic is going to come back momentarily. So, if you mind, if you repeat the question again. Oh, I was suggesting that for very few people who do not have email, right? So somebody have to uh, sign up for them, and then you have to communicate between the, the email and those people by printing out a copy and send it to him. That's one. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only solution, yeah, I'm afraid, yeah. So they don't, yeah, they don't have to receive emails. They can just go to nestor.com and look at the postings by turning off all of their email notifications. But they do need an email address to join is, is the thing. So. Um, sorry, yeah, go ahead. We don't have enough money. Everyone knows that, <clears throat> excuse me, that when you type in your name or your phone number or your address into Google, you're horrified and surprised at the results. Um, I will be very queried by 114 homes about the security. How do you prevent this from being picked up, from somehow or other being moved into Google? And in your business plan, are we going to eventually see advertising, even though it might be sort of benign? Mm -hmm. I'm worried about the security and the future advertising. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm not an engineer, so I can't really describe and explain all the technical details that go into it, but basically all of our next door websites are secure so that if you went and tried to search for content on a Google on Google or any other search engine, you cannot access any of the content on next door websites. That's only for you and your neighbors. So for instance, my neighborhood is called um, next door Park Merced. said. Um, the only thing that you would be able to see is a link to our website, the website for Partner Said Residents. Um, sorry, I was logged in. <laughs> so, on Google, that's all you would see if you tried to search for something within the Nextdoor neighborhood site. That's all you would see. You would see, you know, 
next door, partner said related things, but you wouldn't be able to search anything within the website. You have to be able to log in and view that content, and only if you're a neighbor, a resident of the neighborhood. Um, the other question with advertising, it's something that I can't really answer. What we do know is that we're working really hard to make this product um, a really delightful experience and a useful experience for our users. And when we do implement a revenue model and we have advertisements or any other type of you know, business model, um, we are going to try our best not to you know, make it a, a spammy type of experience or an invasive type of, type of experience for our users. Um, it's still a little fuzzy as far as what the neighborhoods are, how big they are. Uh, that's number one. Second of all, how, do you, how does the neighborhood implement this? Is it already done for us? Do we have to spend some time? How do you maintain it? Mm -hmm. And uh, one last thing, I'd like to just, uh, the advertising part, are we assured that we will not ever get advertising on this thing? No, <laughs> that's, you know, so this, we have to make money too at some point, so I can't becomes, say never. Then this becomes, becomes a quagmire because yeah. it's bad enough where you go on websites and you get banners and everything else. I want, it's going to be hard to, to sell this to people with advertising. It's, it's not going to go over. Yeah, um, but like I said, we're going to have to do something to make money in the future. We can't, you know, keep getting investors to, you know, give us funds. At some point, we do have to become um, self-sufficient. Um, we do have to have a, have a business model. Some of the things that we're envisioning is probably having a completely separate section on the next site, like, for instance, have one section over here so that it doesn't even show up on the news feed. Have a section where local businesses can provide information on their businesses and try to get, you know, some of the residents in their immediate area to, you know, come, you know, check out their new business or um, they can offer deals and things like that. But in a way that's not, it's not going to be banners like from Walmart or anything like that. That's for sure. Um, and I know a lot of people have had bad, bad experiences with other social networks and I feel the same way, um, you know, but I think that we really do value um, that this is a useful tool for the neighborhoods and we don't want to make that a bad experience for everyone. And the last thing we want is for our users to leave us. So we're gonna try our best. Um, and then the other question about how Nextdoor is set up, um, it depends on where you live. In Cupertino today, because all of the households actually currently belong to a Nextdoor neighborhood, um, like I showed you over here, wherever your home is on the map, if your address is within, I guess you can't really see, it's hard to see. But if you live, let's say, um, up here, like in Oak Valley, this area, and your address is right in the middle, um, and you type in that address when you go to nextdoor.com, that's, that's where you will get redirected to. So you will be, it'll say, you know, welcome to Nextdoor Oak Valley. Um, so like I said, these neighborhoods um, were primarily, they were defined by Cupertino residents, um, the people who first joined the website, they draw their own boundaries. And then what we did is we went in, um, I worked with the existing next door members as well as the city to kind of refine these neighborhoods to ensure that every, every household is part of a next door neighborhood, as well as to align it a little bit better with the share speeds so that it would be a more effective um, neighborhood watch and crime update type of platform. So yes, go ahead. Wait, wait, wait a second. Let me... there you go. Oh, thanks. So, um, a basic question. So, like, so just to introduce to the people in our neighborhood. So, how do you roll it out? Because if you call in a meeting and if you talk, um, they're not going to be convinced of something, right? So, is it like a demo slides or something for people to send it to our neighbors or something about oh, this presentation? Right. Um, so, we do have presentation files um, that we can send to you. Um, you okay. can just, so help.nextor.com is where you would go for all of our FAQs as well as um, it has an option to contact our support team. And if you contact them, they'll send you, you know, like a presentation deck and things that you can use. Um, this is available on nextor.com, this demo site. So, if you go to nextor.com right now, this is what you'll see. So you'll see um, our video and you can see information. See a neighbor in action. This is the exact demo site that I was just showing you. So if you click oh. on that, you will go straight to the demo site and you will be able to show your neighbors what it looks like if you have your computer in hand or if they're over at your, um, at your house. You can show them what it looks like. You can watch the video. Um, you can read about it. And then right here is where you would actually sign up to join, and you would just type in your email and address and then start that way. Okay. 
So along the same line, so the block leader basically initiates the link. Is that how it starts? How do you start the, you know, within your neighborhood so, for people to um, go and sign up? Right. So all you have to do is put in your email and street address, and you'll be able to join right away. Uh -huh. And then what you can do is if you wanted to invite more people, more of your, um, within your block to join, then there are different ways on the website. Like, for instance, you can send them email invitations, um, you can do postcard invitations, and you can send out flyers. So you can send out, you know, give, hand out flyers in person or mail out postcards, which we do for you, um, or do um, an email invitation if you have their email addresses. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Yes. So, oh, I think the mic needs to. Sorry if you covered this already, but um, how do you confirm or verify that the person who is signing up is actually at the address that they're mm -hmm. claiming? Yeah, um, so I'll go back to that slide. So there are different ways that you can verify your address. And so it's mainly there's a postcard verification. So you go to nextdoor.com, you type in your address and your mailing address, and then it redirects you to a page and it says, choose a verification method. So if you choose postcard, it'll send you a postcard within a week or something. It'll have a code on it, then you go back to nextdoor.com and type in the code, and that's how you get access into the site. Um, other, other verification options are doing a phone call or a mobile verification. So it matches your billing address, and then it gives you a phone call, and then it gives you a code that you need to enter again so that you can access your neighborhood website. Um, there is credit card uh, verification where you put in your credit card information. We don't store it, but it's just to cross-check the billing address to the address that you typed in at nextdoor.com. And if that matches, you um, get access to the site. And then another way is to get neighbors that are already on Nextdoor to verify you um, because they're already verified. So they can vouch for you and say, I know that like somebody lives at this specific neighborhood, then they can vouch for you and verify you as well. So. so well, it depends on who your neighbors are, I guess. I mean, I don't imagine anyone being able to really abuse that. Um, so it's pretty secure, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> so I like the idea that you're verifying the address on mm -hmm. there. But I was just talking to John before we had dinner that our neighborhood, we have a lot of renters. Mm -hmm. Can they get out? Um, because once they are out of our neighborhood, I actually don't want them to receive emails from us. Right, right. Or like, because if we're asking for help or mm -hmm. somebody's not home, to right, right. Looks, right. People are not in our neighborhood. I mm -hmm. don't want them to know that. Right. So theoretically, I mean, the renters actually do have to notify us to let them let us know that they're moving. And usually, people do if they're active on Nextdoor, they do this because they want to sign up um, for Nextdoor at their new address, and they can't do that without deleting their current um, account with the current neighborhood because you can only be part of one neighborhood because you can physically only live in one address. That's what we're, that's what the theory is. Um, so a lot of the time, people actually email us and say, "We're moving. Please delete my account for this neighborhood. I'm moving to this neighborhood. Can you help me?" So then our support team handles that. Um, sometimes they forget the renters. They just you know move and they don't even bother with doing this. So then a lot of the time, the people on the Nextdoor website, their neighbors know that this renter has moved out. They say, "This person doesn't live here anymore. Please delete that person's account." So then we go ahead and delete that for them. But as block so. leaders, do we have a list of people that are around us? Yeah, so you'll see? have over here on the map, although, well, so on the map you'll see that the green parcels are where you have next door members sign up, signed up. Um, yellow are the homes that have been invited through, you know, postcard or email or whatnot. And pink parcels are the ones that are part of the neighborhood, but nobody has signed up at that address yet. So you'll see, let me see if the profile... So if that person decides to um, provide full profile information to their neighbors, you'll see their, their profile pop up right here. Um, so you can click on each of the parcels and you'll see them. And then the other way is you'll have a neighborhood directory over here where you can see different people and their addresses. Some people decide not to um, expose their exact street number because they feel uncomfortable doing that. So in that case, they hide their street number and then it would look like this. Let's see. Settings, not set here. Profile. So you can edit your profile to hide full address and then 
Mm, maybe it doesn't work on our demo site. So basically, if you, oh, there we go. So if you hide your full address, then it's just your street um, that shows up on your profile. So does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you, first of all, for doing this, yeah. because I think hopefully we, could, we can see in a couple of years a lot of younger generation going to come into the city, and this hopefully become a very yeah. useful tool. Mm -hmm. So I personally do not against anything about ad. Mm -hmm. uh, but as long as the website will please or serve the needs of the most of residents mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, my question is how do you or how does this website stand out or separate this mm -hmm. from any other community based, you know, the, the, the network, I don't want to use the word, a network of social media. Because yeah. if I were lost a dog, I will send out on my Facebook, everybody can see it, more mm -hmm. than neighborhood, right? More than right, just this. So right. how do you stand out from others? And so, I also want to know, second, sorry, second question, mm -hmm. what's your, when you keep saying that you ask the residents, how many is your sample pool? How many people you ask or a percentage out of our Cupertino residents? Sorry, what was the second question Second again? question is when you say you always talk to or draw the boundary or zone mm -hmm. when you communicate with the res uh, residents in Cupertino, what are the percentage you are speaking with? How many people you are speaking um, with? So how many members do we have in Cupertino? I think we have more than 4,000, was it? Or Let's see this. I think we have, I'm, blank, I'm blanking out on the number. Um, we have 19 neighborhoods and I think a few thousand residents on Nextdoor right now. Um, so those are the people that are, we are reaching because we're emailing, we emailed all of them, asking them, telling them that we're going to partner with the city and we want to look at these boundaries and kind of realign them to match the sheriff's uh, beats boundaries. So we talked to all of them. Um, in a lot of cases, when, we, when it comes to neighbor boundary issues, we usually reach out to the founding members and leads first. And these people are basically moderators of the site. They're the people who first joined the Nextdoor website, set it up. They're the ones who invite the most people. Um, they're the ones who are designated as leads by other, um, by other leads. So I would say that all of you would be great candidates for an extra lead. So you'll be moderating the site. You can view um, flagged content, content and um, things like that. You can verify your neighbors, um, participate in the leads forum. So um, that is basically what we did. In Cupertino, we talked to everyone who, who's on Nextdoor and asked them to reply to our emails. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me finish this, the answer to um, this question, and I think we need to probably conclude. Um, the How Nextdoor is unique. Um, so it's funny that your, you know, your example about your lost pet, that's exactly why you really would need Nextdoor, because on Facebook, I have friends across the country, I have friends across the globe. If I talk about my lost pet, I don't think anyone would reply. Out of like my hundreds of Facebook friends, um, nobody actually lives in my neighborhood. Um, and there may be people who live close to their friends and live in the same neighborhood, and that would be useful. But in most cases, um, you can't really talk to your friends about things that are happening in your neighborhood because they don't live right next to you. So I think that's what sets it apart. Um, another thing is, like I've said a million times already, next door is private. It's not. Um, it's not public. It's only accessible to people that are in the neighborhood. Um, so that's another thing that really sets it apart, and the verification and all of that that I just explained. So there are more things that you can find on our help center. Um, so I think that we're kind of out of time right now. So you can just go to. That's been standing. So if we can just wrap that up in oh. D. <laughs> Sorry. And so I didn't see if it. we could. 30 seconds. Yes. Each. A lot of the questions can be answered if you go to help.nextdoor.com you'll find the answers to most of your questions here, actually. So, so go ahead. Not so much a question as a comment. We've, we, have, uh, we have 55 houses uh, on next door. We've been with them a couple years. They wanted us to incorporate with a larger group, and we said no. So they said, fine, you can keep your, your homestead villa designation. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been very useful. They're not going to be everything you want them to be, but they can be. I have, I have 73 uh, email addresses for houses, and, and 55 of them, not exclusive, are next door. That's so great. it can be a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And last, last one back there. Okay, I have a, a question and a, and a comment or concern. The uh, question is, if I understand you correctly, if someone is a landlord or a property owner 
Mm-hmm. Um, they might be very interested in the crimes and things like that going on in the neighborhood where they own that property. Yep. Um, but from what you're saying, they would not be able to join. Is that correct? So they can. Um, there's another way around that, with, and I just brought up the help article for that. Um, so basically what you can do is um, you do have to get approval from your the neighborhood leads, um, and what you do is you sign up, and we probably verify you or the next door leads in that neighborhood has to verify you. But you have to prove to them that you're actually a property manager or a landlord in that neighborhood. Um, sometimes they send us documents. Um, sometimes the leads in the neighborhood know that this person is a property owner in that neighborhood, and they verify that them. Um, and then we just ask that in your profile, you note that I don't actually live in the neighborhood, by, but I, you know, I own property here. And with, this is why I'm part of your neighborhood as well as my own home neighborhood. So we just ask you to indicate that in your profile. So in that case, they could be a member of multiple neighborhoods. They could. Um, yeah. But it's not a lot of people do that, but sometimes they do. Um, okay. The, yeah. co- the concern that I wanted to express is that in, in Silicon Valley, for instance, generally one out of 10 startup companies make it, and the other nine either fail or possibly get purchased by another company. So if I were to sell this to people in, in my area and tell them that they should join, I think people might be very skeptical because they'd go, well, we're going to invest some energy in this and maybe it's going to go away. Um, you know, why, why should we bother when, when it might not be there in another year? Yeah. yeah and, I, and, and thank you for that, Yeah, I think I'm going to have to conclude with that. I think uh, Eugene had mentioned some of the, the pros with it. And just as a reminder that this really is an opt-in system. Um, it is free for us. It's an option. The millennials, the newer generation, I think are really going to start keying into any type of social media to connect them. So again, this is an option. Um, I understand that there are concerns, but we're, you know, if, if we move forward again, the, the city, I do have to say this, is, it's unveiling to you today because it's going to go citywide um, tomorrow, Stephanie. And so we're going to, where are you? There you are. So just to let you know, as block leaders, we wanted you to know about this first, that this is something that so many other communities are tapping into. It's an option. Um, again, I had to move away from the paper and the little redhead girl mailbox thing and look at other, other areas to communicate. So again, thank you so much, Eugene, for your time. Maybe we can set up uh, another, you know, a, a follow-up at some point on, on getting more information. So we appreciate it. But thanks again for your time, Eugene. Thank you.